All right, so the recording has started. Let's begin with a word of prayer. I want to request uh, one of our friends here on the call to please lead in prayer, and then we will get into today's subjects. Lubiga, how about you? We, we pray? Yes, please. Let's humble ourselves and we pray. Father in heaven, we come before you, thanking you for this great moment. As we're going to start this lecture in, in Keys to Supernatural Ministry, so Lord, bless us. When King Solomon was asking for everything God gave him, he just asked for wisdom, and God added everything to him. So Lord, we also ask for wisdom, and we do believe that you're going to give us good health and wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we also pray for those kids who have not yet joined the class. Also come and join us as we take this mission statement that Jesus Christ left us into uh, in advance. So Lord, we also bless the pastor. So Lord, give her wisdom so that she can inculcate in, in arts, knowledge, skills, and values. We do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega. Uh, so, so far, we've uh, touched on the keys to supernatural ministry, eight of them. And then we have been talking about personal preparation. In the last class, we were focusing uh, on intimacy with God because you know, without intimacy, um, we cannot fully know the heart of God. And especially when it comes to the supernatural, you know, the way Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. So he was so intimate with the Father. And scriptures tell us that Jesus was in the bosom of the Father or the embrace of the Father in that sense. The closeness, you know, which he had, uh, of course, um, you know, just by virtue of the fact that he's part of the Trinity. But then we observed his prayer life. We observed his walk of obedience, even though he could have exempted himself very easily. He was careful to build his relationship with the father through prayer, through obedience. And because of all these reasons, you know, he walked in the knowledge of what God wanted for him. He was able to gain the strength to fulfill God's purpose for his life and you know, his life was uh, filled with miracles. Yes, there was the power of the Holy Spirit, but then the sensitivity, right? The sensitivity to the voice of God. Uh, that is also important uh, to see the supernatural. So from the life of Jesus, you know, we, we observe that intimacy and we said in our own personal lives, there's a great need uh, for personal worship and that we have to fight for it. I remember discussing last time that uh, uh, life gets busier by the day, by the year, uh, you know, different stages of life. We have so many things, you know, piling up on our plates, but we got to fight for that time with God, uh, that intimate personal time with God through personal worship, we said meditation in God's word is another very key thing that will help us uh, connect with God. We talked about confession of God's word, you know, confession, declaration of God's word. We are taught in the word about the importance of speaking the word. So that too must be a part of our life. We touched on prayer and fasting as well. And you know, as Jesus um, taught us in John chapter 15, he said, without me, you can do nothing. But you know, with him, we who are the fruit bearing part of the branch, sorry, of the vine. So we are the branches. Where does the fruit appear on the branches? So when we are connected to the vine, 
the life of the vine flows through us and there is that opportunity to bear fruit so no connection to the vine forget about being fruitful even if we are a branch fruitfulness since, since we are talking about you know ministry and supernatural ministry how can we see results how can we see the demonstration of the supernatural or fruitful you know how can we be fruitful connectedness intimacy okay, intimacy with the father intimacy with the godhead so in personal preparation intimacy becomes the most important thing and we've got to pursue it. We need to seek after God. That scripture uh, encourages us that we will find him when we seek after him. So uh, there is that element of taking the initiative. Okay, It's not going to uh, fall on our heads like low-hanging low fruit. It's just not going to, you know, uh, fall on us like rain. Okay, so even to get wet, you have to step out into the rain. There is an initiative. So uh, we stopped with this thought that one must make the effort to draw close to God. And nowhere are we looking at this as uh, a task or a work for salvation. No. Yes, we have received the grace of God, and. We are not even saying that intimacy should be pursued because we will be fruitful. No, intimacy is just the cry of our hearts. And of course, as a result of intimacy, we are going to see fruitfulness. Okay, uh, But intimacy is so key, so important uh, in our walk with the Lord. We can't be lukewarm. We have to be on fire in our relationship with the Lord. And from that place, we will begin to see that this supernatural ministry and all the keys that we are talking about, right? We will see those things begin to work, begin to come alive uh, simply because you know we put God first and um, pursue our relationship with the Lord intimately. And of course, there is a release of the anointing of God Know, from that place of intimacy. Now, let's move on. There are a couple of other points here under uh, personal preparation. There are a total of 10 points. So we'll see you know, how, how many we can cover today. At least still holiness, I thought we can uh, uh, cover. So the next is identity. So especially when we talk about supernatural ministry, uh, why does it matter? To be strong about our identity and we know when we say identity talking about who we are in christ jesus you know when we believe in the lord jesus we become sons and daughters of god right we become children of god uh, like uh, john 1 12 says so we understand our special position we understand our position of authority okay we understand our position of privilege in god uh, and we know that from that place, we can step into the supernatural. You know, no longer can Satan condemn us or keep us uh, prisoners with the thoughts that say, you are unworthy. Because remember, when we have that sense of condemnation and unworthiness, we said that, you know, I, I think we talked about it when we were talking about the anointing or something, where if one is not in that place of confidence in Christ, ministering in the supernatural, uh, it can be hindered. Okay? Because we will lack faith. Okay? And where there's a lack of faith, obviously, you will not see the demonstration of the supernatural. So, identity or confidence in who we are in Christ Jesus is very important. You know, the way Jesus said, uh, he who believes in me shall do greater things than these in John 14 and verse 12. We've got to believe it and say, yes, I believe I am going to do greater things than these. So then it becomes easy for me to step out into 
supernatural ministry. But if I don't believe that and I say, I don't think so. After all, who am I? You know, uh, like Jacob said, I'm just a worm. So I'm not basing my identity on who God says I am and what God says I can do. So taking time to build ourselves up. And this might, again, take a while. Um, I remember there were times when early on when I began preaching uh, that there were some days when I would prepare my sermon. And after preparing my sermon, I will sit with the scriptures uh, of you know who we are in Christ. And I will just declare that. Because I had that extent of self-doubt. And I would wonder, Lord, but how can you walk through me? I don't have much you know, experience and I don't have much. So to overcome the, the uh, oppressive thoughts of self-doubt, I would just declare, no, in Christ Jesus, you know, uh, I am redeemed, I am blessed, uh, yeah, I am a child of God. So I would just begin to declare and declare and declare till I come to a place in my heart where I would say, no, devil, I don't want to hear your voice. I know who I am in Christ. And if God has called me, he will give me the grace. He will uh, speak through the words that I speak. So it's a battle. So when we want the supernatural to be released, identity becomes very crucial. Okay, So that is one side of identity. The other side of identity is, uh, you know, another extreme where we are so confident, uh, but then we may also, I'm just using the word, okay, but uh, it's not a very pleasant word, but I, I just so you get the meaning of what I'm trying to say, like a little arrogant, where where we we are, uh, uh, we have air about ourselves, and we feel that because God is working through my life, you know, should I be, or uh, the servant of God that I am, or the man of God that I am, or the woman of God that I am. But you see, that's next, isn't it? We exist in Christ and we have this position. We have been given authority and dominion and we can use it. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we, uh, we move with pride and arrogance and even, you know, like commanding um, God or, or, or people around us and expecting, you know, we use the word entitlement, where we believe that we deserve great honor, we deserve, um, you know, great support, like people should treat me like this, I should be given the first front seat, because God is working through my life, you know, uh, but you see, that becomes too much of an extreme, yes, be established in the identity, that's very important for the gifts to flow, faith, you know, because that's a place of faith. Uh, but then we must avoid the extreme where we have a sense of entitlement and we want special treatment because, hey, the prophetic, the, um, you know, the supernatural healings, deliverance, signs, wonders are being done through my life. See, Jesus said, when we believe these things will happen, every child of God. Okay, so in fact, we will see later, one must walk in humility, okay, uh, instead of this attitude of being and feeling entitled, all right, so it leads to dangers, it really leads to dangers, It's it leads to a sense of uh, superiority, we treat ourselves differently and, you know, we can make excuses for treating people badly, poorly, you know, uh, uh, that we we um, also another thing that you know talking about identity uh, and uh, being established in the supernatural is concerned. Another extreme thing that happens to people is, let's say we are flowing in the gift, okay, uh, and many things are happening through our lives, and and some season of our lives, uh, for whatever reason, we don't see that much of the supernatural manifesting anymore or um, you know i'm just giving an example maybe uh, because of some personal reasons we have to move somewhere else and uh, those people don't even know us right what happens opportunities come down you know to minister in the church setting all that 
so a sense of worthlessness can take over where we feel now i'm useless you know i don't have anything to do so does god really love me anymore so what's happening we are connecting the manifestation of the supernatural or supernatural ministry to our identity so we should never connect you know our uh, ministry to our identity in such a way that it becomes uh, counterproductive or destructive okay because when we don't have opportunity to do that ministry we become very discouraged or we become depressed but who am i you know yes i may be a teacher of the word i may be a worship leader i may be moving in the gifts of the spirit but at the end of the day i'm a child of god and nobody can take that away from me even if i don't have opportunity to minister sometimes so being secure in who we are in christ rather than being secure in our ministry okay is very important it's very very important especially when we are moving in the supernatural so never uh, be so connected as far as your identity is concerned with you know ministry or supernatural ministry it's okay people don't recognize us as a pastor or a teacher that's okay at the end of the day we are children of god and we are still as valued you know as uh, anyone else so this is a little bit about our heart where our heart should be as far as our identity is concerned and you know, that that's a very powerful place and uh, we should be able to serve god from there uh, just to remind all of us if at all you have any uh, additional thoughts or questions please feel free you can always um, just unmute yourself and begin to talk i'm continuing just so we can cover more ground okay so the next aspect here uh, in supernatural ministry is compassion so heart preparation my preparation when we look at the ministry of jesus now we always see that the lord jesus when he looked at the people you know there are passages of scripture that say he was moved with compassion that they were like sheep without a shepherd that they had all these challenges so we can ask the question what initiated the supernatural you know uh, as far as um, jesus's ministry was concerned you know when he he uh, multiplied food he looked at the people and they didn't have food so he was concerned he told his disciples we've got to do something for them a heart of compassion that's where the ministry initiated he looked at the woman of naim her young son had died and he was compassionate oh she has nobody so what did uh, jesus do he raised up you know uh, the son of that lady of naim but what is it that is the if you want to use the word like a trigger for jesus to do all these wonderful works whether it is a miracle whether it is a resurrection compassion okay and when we think about supernatural ministry uh compassion and love in our hearts for the people uh is key you know sometimes uh we might go into this mode of thinking that you know okay this is how the principles of god's word works these are how the gifts work okay i'll just stick to that i don't care you know the you may have other motivations like oh i i have uh, prayed this year that i must see hundred healings so whether i care for the people or not lord you do a miracle you know it's working well for the people but where is my heart my heart is at i want to establish a ministry or you know i want to be known as you know sometimes people say no oh so powerful this very powerful man of god you know so think for that sometimes we want that fame we want that validation ministry comes from a place natural to be known 
as you know oh person comes only sign miracles healings so what's happening my identity is based on my ministry and i'm not so concerned and god touching the lives their bodies their hearts what we see some passages here and i'm not actually you know getting us to read them but they all state like matthew 14 14 mark mark 6:34 with verses 11 through 17 they all state that for jesus the motivating factor was i have to touch the lives of the people and make something good for them so he did what he did so even for us we have to ask the question do i really care for the people no why am i and i think it's applicable not just for supernatural ministry but for every ministry if i am teaching i ask the question is it edifying is it blessing for the people are they being established in the god or is it for a name for myself or if i'm again you know leading worship or doing art or whatever any any ministry supernatural ministry how is it a blessing for the people how is it meeting their needs love and compassion right when we care for the people in fact we will go a greater distance to serve them serve them well serve them better okay so sometimes we see people putting so much of hard work you know studying the word and sharing the you know when that comes from a place of compassion what they could be thinking is i need to get the truth of god's word to be able to feed the people nurture the people with the word so excellent ministry is flowing from a place of compassion and so we must always remember that especially when it comes to supernatural ministry don't go by this is the principle okay because i have seen that in my own life and i have also maybe you know made a, made mistakes sometimes where it's just about it just command and yeah, what's happening to the person we don't care the miracle has to happen you know the healing has to take place no but what about the individual compassion and love for the individual you know the bible says in galatians 5 6 that faith works by love so we need faith for supernatural but what is faith standing on love a heart of love we must pray and ask the lord give me a heart of love for the people lord the people that i am ministering to and then you will see a greater manifestation of the supernatural second thessalonians 1 verse 11 it also teaches us that you know god meets our work of faith with his power so we've got to have i've been saying love as the basis and from love comes you know uh the right kind of faith and when we step out with faith that's when god's power can come and be at work so you see there's a connection right we are only looking for the power but behind the power is faith and behind faith is love without love in our hearts you know we cannot step out into true supernatural ministry uh, so i see that there's a, a hand raised yes zeli you have something to share Uh, you're on mute, Zeli.
Okay, not sure if that was by mistake. We'll proceed and we'll see in case she's able to. Okay, it was by mistake. Okay, no problem. Let's let's move on. So, any anything so far about identity or compassion? Okay, so just think about it and uh, do pray regarding that. Uh, <clears throat> Especially, you know, at times when ministry is very tiring, it happens, uh, particularly uh, when we go for mission trips and all that. Sometimes we just feel like stopping, but the crowds are huge. But, you know, in those moments, sometimes I've, I've, I've thought to myself, what is it uh, that is giving us the energy? It's compassion. When you look at the faces of the people, so you sense that love of God where you don't want to stop. You want to pray for another person and another person and another person, right? Uh, and even particularly, like for me, it has happened when I see people who are demon possessed. Yes, there is anger against Satan and the demonic, uh, you know, spirits that are tormenting that person. But when you look at the person in that state of trauma, your heart just melts to see how a child of God can, uh, you know, face all that difficulty. They should be set free. Okay? And uh, then we go ahead and we minister because we want them set free. Okay, so compassion is very important, uh, particularly for supernatural ministry. Okay, moving on. Holiness. No, it, it goes without saying that holiness is not just uh, necessary for ministry, but it is important for uh, uh, a good, uh, the right kind of a Christian life. Okay, when Paul wrote to Timothy, he wrote to him and he said, "If you cleanse yourself from um, all the evil things of the world, you will become uh, a vessel that is ready and useful for the master's use." So, holiness is to be cleansed and be available for God. And that is applicable whether you know we are thinking about ministry or not. As a child of God, we know, God says in his word, be holy as I am holy. So we are called to holiness. Uh, and that's the way any child of God should live their lives. But when it comes to ministry and supernatural ministry, what is it about holiness that you know we uh, we want to look into? Yes, we will avoid sinful deeds, sinful thoughts, get rid of sin in our heart, in our mind also. So you see, there are these levels, right? So deeds are more in our behavior, what we do on the outside. But then the inner level is our heart and our mind where we choose to consecrate from the place of initiation, our thoughts. We dedicate it to God and we say, God, I want to be holy, not just in what I do, but also, uh, you know, as the psalmist said in Psalm 19, verse 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. So words and meditations of the heart at every level holiness being set apart for god you know that is the call of any child of god so when it comes to uh you know someone who is pursuing the supernatural you know as a minister of god we can look at it in this way now, again, like uh, we're not saying that uh, a minister or somebody who's serving God is better than a believer. No, that's not what we're saying. But if we do consider uh, a civilian and a soldier, you see the lifestyle of a soldier will be very different from a civilian. A soldier is thinking and preparing oneself, himself or herself for the war. So if there is a crisis situation, 
you know my body should be fit you know i i should be ready to uh go to battle uh i should be ready in every way skill wise uh you know um, my my fitness wise or my mental preparation wise so a soldier is very intentional to win the battle so as ministers who are pursuing the supernatural we have to be intentional so we might just talk about okay you know don't do sinful deeds and uh, uh, just just be you know just do the right thing and that is holiness but for somebody who's pursuing ministry and supernatural ministry it is right to say that we may also need to go one step higher somewhat like a soldier okay with more focus more intentionality so uh, by that we mean that let's say we are living a holy life we're not doing anything sinful we're not thinking anything sinful but god may deal with parts of our life which may be unnecessary is it sinful no it's not but it may be unnecessary there can be certain things which may be un unprofitable okay to us uh, or there could be things which are unedifying things that don't build us up and you know god has this way of putting his finger on those things also in our lives and saying can you get rid of that okay but we might say lord it's not wrong no i'm not doing anything wrong however when we respond to god even in these matters where uh you know it it may not be sinful really but just because god is speaking to us regarding those matters we make a change it's a place of greater consecration okay now others might look at us and say what is wrong with you you know the bible doesn't say don't do this or don't it doesn't say no then it's okay why are you making it uh, so legalistic but you see for each of us it may be different whatever i'm talking about uh let's look at some some statements that paul made and then i i will see if i can give you an example uh so in first corinthians 6:12 you know paul said all things are lawful for me but all things are not helpful all things are lawful for me but i will not be brought under the power of any okay he repeats a similar thought in first corinthians 10:23 where he says all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful all things are lawful for me but not all things edify so in other words he say it may be okay but it doesn't really add to my add to me in any way it doesn't strengthen me in any way okay uh and he also points out there that uh, uh brought under the power of any so we can take something very simple okay something like let's say watching movies is it wrong no we can watch good movies clean movies uh it's okay you know as as uh, something that one does for entertainment we could be a believer we could also be in ministry but maybe you know we do watch uh, some good movies learn from it be inspired by it there's absolutely no problem but if let's say there's somebody you know, who likes to spend time with videos and movies and things like that and they're not particularly uh with intention trying to gain some knowledge but just spending time so imagine if this habit of uh, watching movies or spending time in videos um you know it begins to take up a few hours per day okay, it starts like that so you're just randomly watching scrolling going here going that two hours three hours same thing happens next day same thing happens next day 
if we ask a question, is it right or wrong? See, we may not be able to give an answer to that. The person may not be watching anything filthy or, you know, ungodly. But if we ask the question, is it helpful? Answer is no. It's not helpful. Okay. Uh, and does it edify? Does it strengthen the person in God or in any other way? No. You're just scrolling through and you've lost whatever, 10, 20 hours a week. You've lost time. We can also ask the question, can you manage without you know, spending this time with the videos and the movies? Maybe at some point, you know, the individual might say, actually, no. I want to spend some time to unwind. So what's happening? Slowly, that is taking control over us. Right? So you're being brought under the power. So what Paul was saying is, see, this is another dimension of holiness where we need, if I may say so, like a little higher level of commitment, a higher level of consecration. Now, it's not about right and wrong, but it's about, is it helpful? Does it edify? Is it making me a slave? You know, this can happen with food. It can happen with many things that all of us like. Very legitimate, valid things that many of us like. But somewhere if we feel, and see, it's very personal. The things that affect you may not be affecting me. Okay. Uh, but we ask the question, if this is something that may begin to control me in some way, then I don't want it in my life. I don't want anything to control me. Okay. I want to be free to worship God. I want to, uh, you know, at any point I should be ready to, to serve the Lord. And uh, uh, let's say any substance, small little substance, that should not be an addiction for me. Are you, are you all getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, it it's like, moving with God when he's showing us certain things, okay? And uh, uh, as, I, as I've been saying, we'll have to hear the voice of God personally for us, ourselves to know what, what are those things in our own lives that, you know, we should avoid and uh, how we should consecrate ourselves unto the Lord. Okay? And at different stages in life, it might be something different. But through all this, God is just taking us to a greater consecration and a greater separation unto him. And also, we shouldn't impose it on others, isn't it? So each one could make their own journey of uh, committing and dedicating themselves unto the Lord. So God has this method as far as holiness is concerned. He'll just keep taking us higher, higher, higher. So when we read about the uh, passage of Jesus being the wine and us being the branches, we also see in verse 2 uh, that every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he does what? Prunes, that it may bear much fruit, bear more fruit. So here's the next point. Talking about supernatural ministry and bearing more fruit. We may be bearing fruit, but to bear more fruit from time to time, God works like this in our lives. He'll say, okay, how about you fix this area of your life? How about you fix the other area of your life? Are you willing to let go of maybe some extra sleep or some money or some clothes or some friends? It could be anything, but we have to allow God's pruning in our lives. Whenever pruning takes place, what is the gardener doing? More fruitfulness, more fruit. How can this tree have more fruit? Okay, cut off the dry leaves, cut off the extra branches, you know. So in that way, allow more sunlight. Ultimately, there will be more results even as far as our ministry and supernatural ministry is concerned. So we must allow the pruning to take away, you know, as we've been saying, 
certain things in our lives so unnecessary unprofitable unedifying things and when we do that we will move to greater levels of fruitfulness in god okay so i think i will just stop here today we have touched on three aspects one is identity for supernatural ministry we said compassion and the third holiness uh we will you know do more in the next class uh, but any any thoughts as of now or something to add All right, so uh, you could think through uh, all these aspects, and uh, let's close off with a word of prayer. Uh, again, I want to invite maybe someone else. Lobega began, and someone else can please pray, and we will close the class. Father, we uh, thank you for this time of learning. We thank you for teaching us, O oh God, for uh, preparing ourselves, abstain from things that you um, uh, you want us to prune, O oh God. We pray that you will be able to identify and move according to your Spirit, Lord Jesus. Everything that we need to change in our lives, O oh God, we pray that we would be sensitive to your voice and uh, whatever which is not profitable. We pray, O oh God, that you show us and we would be able to change, O oh God, so that we would be a channel of your glory, we would channel of your power, and we'll be able to minister to people, God. Father, we pray that help us to identify the areas that we need to work on and uh, work towards it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for enabling Pastor Nancy to share your word. Bless each one of us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. May you see much fruit in the ministry that you're involved in. God Thank bless. you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, brother. To give me give me a I did get I I Papa Daddy, tell me about it.